hello everyone so now let us look at the working and the simulation of an op-amp following which we will try to build the layout for an op-amp so in general uh, when you are building an op-amp the blocks required are the differential amplifier and common source amplifier so we have to remember that before we can commence the build for an op-amp we require the uh, designs of both the common source amplifier as well as the differential amplifier and when we say designs what we intend is that we have the schematic the symbol as well as the layout of uh, all of both of them that is the differential as well as the common source amplifier now let us again create a blank cell view first so let me create a blank cell view and call it as a pump and uh, i'm going to create a schematic for this cell view so into this schematic we are going to call the existing differential and common source amplifier designs so we have a symbol for a differential amplifier and we have a common source amplifier as well and let's look at what we have inside the differential amplifier let's do a descend on the differential amplifier So this is the differential amplifier that we really are working looking at and this is the common source amplifier that we are working on. So let's go back and now let's just connect them and in order to do complete the connections we require pins here. So uh, the pins are basically VDD and VSS then a biasing pin and, and uh, the inputs two inputs for an op amp and obviously the output so let's create the pins themselves vdd vss idc um, v inverting and v non inverting so vdd vss uh, IDC, V inverting, V non inverting, and V output. Sorry, I didn't get a V output, so let's place an output pin called as V out and Let's do the wiring for the design now. So once we've actually completed the uh, differential and common source, creating an op-amp would simply be interconnecting the two. Therefore, it is uh, very crucial that we have actually obtained the output correctly, the expected output for the differential as well as the common source amplifier without which trying to continue with the op-amp would be futile. Uh, now we have the op-amp completely connected and once the op-amp is ready I think we can go forward and uh, create the symbol for the op-amp. So let me say create cell view from cell view and let's create a symbol for the op-amp. So I'll keep the inverting and the non-inverting terminals only as the left pins. Let me make VDD a top pin and the VSS as a bottom pin and the IDC also as a top pin. Uh, this is just a personal choice. It, it doesn't matter where the pins are placed frankly at this stage. So I, I prefer keeping it like this and going ahead this is the symbol that gets created now we do have the option of modifying this symbol and creating the symbol of an op-amp uh, i shall not go into that uh, i shall continue here and retain the same symbol so now that we have the symbol uh, let's do a simulation of this in order to do that let's create a test bench waveform and into this test bench i shall add the symbol that i just created so i have the symbol and 
along with this symbol I require the inputs for doing this test bench so under analog lib I think we should call in a sine wave a sine voltage with an AC magnitude of um, 5, 1 volt and an amplitude of 5 milli or 5 micro would be better because this op amp would probably give us an amplification of something around 1000 times so the frequency would be 1 kilo and uh, let me give this to the uh, inverting terminal and for the in, uh, source to the power source we require a DC supply so let me call in a DC supply of DC voltage 2.5 volts and let us give this as input to the VDC uh, we require another DC source of minus 2.5 as the source for the VSS terminal and uh, we would require a biasing current IDC of something around 30 micro that's what we have designed this for 30 micro so let me keep a bias current of around 30 micro and finally I think we need ground so let's bring in ground um, this should give us ground and with this I think uh, yeah, one more and finally we need the output pin so let's call it V out and it's output already so let me place that and I think we are ready to do the wiring now so the configuration that we are driving the op amp right now is one of an inverting amplifier uh, we are giving inputs only to the inverting terminal the non-inverting terminal has been connected to ground and uh, we are giving an input in the micro volt range and since the op amps has got a magnification and amplification of around 1000 times I expect the output to be magnified uh, to be amplified somewhere in the milli volt range um, I think our uh, wiring is complete why don't we check yeah it's it's done the wiring is done so now I think we can launch the test bench for this so let me launch ADL and uh, let us do a transient analysis so I picked a schematic where I have given the frequency as 1 kilo so for 10 uh, one cycle would be 1 milli so let me do a simulation for around 5 milliseconds and uh, let's add the DC analysis as well mm, save DC operating point let's take the input as the DC source and along with that a start voltage of 0 and a stop voltage of uh, 5 volts that's very large uh, let's keep the voltage uh, lesser significantly lesser let's say around uh, 2 volts or uh, 2.5 since that's the supply we are supplying uh, we are using here and then uh, an AC analysis of from somewhere around 10 to around 1 mega I guess that should take care of the simulations that we require and let's set the outputs where exactly we want the outputs from we don't have any variables so let's get the outputs so the way outputs are there in the input terminal and the output terminal uh, so let's look at the simulation now let's run this simulation let's check if it works yeah it does uh, this would be very important for us uh, let, let me put the layout as um, card and let's look at the transient so this is the input uh, rating between uh, 5 volts and minus 5 volts so peak to peak the voltage will come to something around 10 micro volts and the output is varying between something like minus 2.705 to around plus minus 2.11 so the difference is somewhere around uh, 20 millivolts 40 millivolts right so this comes to around 40 millivolts 
and the input that we have given is 10 micro volts so it is it is getting uh, amplified by around 40000 times so the op amp is working it's working as an amplifier correctly it's it's not biased well yet it's not balanced but it's working as an amplifier and that is the primary objective of uh, this experiment so going ahead i i think the op amp is working and that should be sufficient for us let's go ahead and uh, go into the layout of this op amp now so now that i have the differential and the common source i require the layout for this so let me launch the layout and ask you to create a new configuration for the layout so let's generate the components i think i already have the layout of the differential and the common source yeah we do have these two already so let me paste them and so let's ask it to place it as in the schematic and that should do it so let's activate the connectivity now and that should activate connectivity so we have the input pins here i guess no this is the vss pin this is the idc oh we haven't received the input pins they are they're here but they are not visible yeah so these are the input pins and the output pin vtd and vss yeah so we have everything that is required for the layout so let's do a connection on these first right so let me place the pins um, in close proximity to the design uh, that should eliminate most of our uh, design related problems So we can see that the VDT terminals are here and there is a uh, connection here. Now this, this connection is the tricky part in this layout here actually. So we have previously only used one metal uh, when we wanted to make a connection. Uh, we only used metal one. But in this design metal one alone will not be sufficient uh, because there are some parts that we have to cross over and taking metal one over metal one will uh, fail for us catastrophically so what we really are going to do is we're going to place uh, metal one to metal two wires and uh, in between these two uh, the we are going to pick the metal 2 wire and we are going to do the wiring so that over this metal we have metal 2 wiring but from here to the wire itself we are going to retain the metal 1 wiring So this is uh, pretty much clear on what we are actually doing here and uh, I ha we have one more connection like that which, which are actually going to overlap. So let me finish the inputs again. So this should be the inverting and the non-inverting terminals and this would be the IDC terminal so let us just bring that about and that should do it so let me move the IDC pin slightly closer and wire this yeah and uh, the other pin that is of important to us is the VSS pin and you can see that it is also going to overlap 
in this particular case so I'm again going to put a wire so let me put a wire here and uh, let's create a metal one to metal two wire for this place and let's just take a metal two wire and connect it to this this would be connected to the metal one wire and let's complete this connection so that's it yeah let's take a metal one again and complete this wiring so now we have no overlap in that particular region and that shouldn't give us any problems as such and finally we have the v out pin so let's bring the output pin onto this so that's the v out pin so let me resize the entire thing slightly it's unnecessarily huge okay yeah so I, I think we are done with the layout here let's uh, label them so that uh, they are visible actually so this is the inverting and this is the non-inverting terminal and this would be the IDC and this is the VSS pin then this is the output pin and this is the BDD pin. So yeah, all the pins are done, and this design is our differential amplifier and our common source amplifier. So this clearly is the layout of an amp. Thank you very much.